So today we are going to discuss about chapters 19 and chapter 20 of the book Spatial Statistics for Data Science with Applications in R. So the chapter 19, it is spatial point processes and simulation and the learning objectives are to understand the difference between spatial point patterns uh, versus processes, to learn about the properties of a Poisson process and to simulate Poisson processes with constant or with spatially varying intensity. So what this is all about, we will see in due time. So spatial point, a spatial point process is a stochastic process and defined by these stochastic variables, which are yeah, locations, and these can take values in a planar region A. So this is this means that the locations can be in different places in each realization of a stochastic process, but also the number of points can be different between different realizations. So one realization, it is called a spatial point pattern, which we have seen already before. So, so the generalization, the, the, the stochastic generalization of a spatial point pattern is called a spatial point process. So the NA, the number of points, it is a random variable in case of a stochastic process. So a spatial point pattern is a single realization of a spatial point process. And each realization has a different number of points and different locations. So it is uh, quite a powerful uh, way to, to model varying, varying, varying realizations of a uh, spatial point process. So the points are also often referred to as events, which we will be using um, now and then. So an important important property of a spatial point process, uh, and it's also used for a spatial point pattern, it is the intensity. We have actually already touched this property before. So it is actually the density of points or events in the area. It's the number of events per unit area. So it's um, denoted by a lambda, a lambda, so it's, it's uh, N A, so the number of events in region A divided by the surface area of region A. So this is the number of events per unit area. We can also do it for a spatial point process, but since N A is a random variable, the parameter intensity is uh, defined by its expected value. Um, so in the numerator, and so the surface area of A is still in the denominator. So this is the same concept, but it is uh, used with the random variable, so we use the expected value. So this is still um, independent of the realizations. So this is this is uh, encompasses all realizations, so it's a parameter of the spatial point process. So we can also make this intensity um, different among places within the within the region A. So if we consider the planar region A as a position range represented by a variable x, we can define an intensity function that depends on this location x. So and then we can define it as okay, it's the expected value for that small area x defined divided by uh, its surface area. So, and this is now dependent on the position. So lambda x is a function that varies through space. And this is still, you can still use the same concept, um, this concept uh, for a spatial point process. So, if we want to get the intensity for the study area, we have to make an integration. So the expected value of the number of points, it is an integration over the, sub, over the entire region A of this um, intensity function x um, multiplied by the dx. So this is 
um, the relationship between the intensity of the whole study area and the local intensity. So some commonly used special cases of spatial point processes it are on the one hand stationary isotropic uh, spatial point process which has a spatially constant intensity function so it's the more simple case so it means that lambda x is just constant we can denote it with lambda uh, also for local use so it is the same for sub regions um, each for each sub region ai you have the same value so it's it's all uh, the same uh, value of this intensity parameter, while in a Poisson spatial point process, in any subregion A i of the region A, we have that the number of events, so n A i, follows a Poisson distribution, which is specific to that subregion. So we have that the parameter of the Poisson distribution has to be um, calculated by integrating the local intensity. So this is um, not uh, necessarily using a constant intensity. So the Poisson distribution supports um, heterogeneity in, in the intensity. And for the subregion AI, you have to integrate just as before if you want to know the intensity, which is in effect, I mean, uh, not the intensity, but the number, the expected number of events in that subregion, and the the that's the expected number. So the actual number of events follows the Poisson distribution with this expected number as its parameter. So it is actually quite normal because the the parameter of Poisson distribution is also uh, the expected value. Uh, of course, of its uh, of the response variable. So the number of events follows a Poisson distribution, and also the locations of realized events are obtained as a random sample. So a spatial random sample with inclusion probability in AOI being proportional to the intensity function lambda x. So with higher in areas or um, locations with a higher intensity, you have a higher inclusion probability to uh, get a location so, um, of, of these realized events. So the general case it's spatially varying lambda x is called a heterogeneous Poisson process. It's the one we have described. While if the lambda x is spatially constant and can just be denoted everywhere by the same constant lambda, then we are uh, talking about a homogeneous Poisson process where the average um, or the expected uh, number of events in subregion AI can just be calculated by taking the constant intensity parameter lambda uh, and multiply it by the surface area of AI. And the homogeneous Poisson process, it is um, tied to the concept of complete spatial randomness. So uh, because the number of events follow a Poisson distribution and they are spatially randomized. So this is um, specific for the homogeneous Poisson process. So for the rest of this chapter and also the next chapter, we are going to talk about Poisson processes and with Poisson processes, we can simulate spatial point patterns from uh, either a homogeneous or a heterogeneous Poisson process. So that's uh, the subject of this chapter. Uh, but we can also test whether a given spatial point pattern deviates from complete spatial randomness. So, and that will be the topic of the next chapter. So these Poisson processes are really um very interesting and can be very useful in the context of spatial point patterns so to simulate spatial point patterns we will use the spotstat library and simulation is useful for example to generate a distribution of process properties and compare it with either data uh, so that you can do hypothesis testing uh, about these data 
or you can compare um, simulated um, patterns with some, or simulated distribution actually with some preset requirement, which you would do for a power analysis with simulated samples, for example, that have specific properties that you have imposed. So just to keep it simple, we can create a single realization of a Poisson process with intensity lambda x, so this is the local intensity, in a specific observation window with the function r plus pp. So with this function, uh, we it needs the lambda para and the lambda arguments and the win arguments, which takes the observation window of the spatial points process. And the argument lambda, it's a decimal number in case of a homogeneous Poisson process, because then, so the lambda defines the intensity, of course. So it's is a constant number in the case of a homogeneous Poisson process, while the heterogeneous Poisson process needs a function that defines the intensity in each position within the observation window. So using X and Y. And so this is all because this defines the area and the intensity. So this is enough to define the Poisson process. And so this function will then generate a single uh, realization. So a single uh, spatial point pattern from this spatial point process. So let's uh, take the values from the book. So the lambda for a homogeneous Poisson process, we use value 100. And we use an observation window of two square units. So in the X range, we have one unit. In the Y range, we have two units. So this is something we saw already in previous chapters, uh, this function to generate an observation window. So the expected number of events, since the intensity is 100, this is one for one square unit. So the expected number of events is 200. Um, so we generate the simulated homogeneous spatial point pattern and we print it and we can see this is a planar point pattern object with 211 points. So it's not 200, it's 211. Uh, and that is because we are using the Poisson distribution to generate the number of events. So in this case, it was 211. Uh, and when we plot it, we can see that it is indeed um, it looks like indeed a, a random uh, distribution in uh, in space. So it is what we wanted and we expected. So we have two hundred and eleven. While this is a different number than the expected number of events, the the the, the parameter of the Poisson distribution is two hundred. So each realization has its own number of events since this number is if sampled from the Poisson distribution. So let's do it a few times more. So next time we get 199 and each time we do another realization, you can see that we are sampling another um, value from the Poisson distribution that defines the number of points that have to be sampled in space. Let's now uh, jump to heterogeneous um, Poisson processes. So again, this is an example from the book. And we have the function with an intercept of 10, then uh, factor 100 and for x and 200 for y. Um, and we have, you're using the same observation window. So the expected number of events in this observation window, we can calculate it by integration. So using this function we saw before, if you integrate this over the observation area, you can find that the expected number of events in this observation window with the given lambda function is 520 events. But of course, this is the parameter of the Poisson distribution. So the number of events of each spatial point pattern, each realization will be a different number. Let's first have a look at this intensity function, which defines the local intensity. And we are, um, well, in the book, I think they are using the base plot functions. Here I've used the ggplots 
function to generate this. So we are just applying the lambda function to sequence of uh, X and Y values, the combinations of those, and then we plot it like this. And we can see that we have actually very low values in the origin of our observation window while we get the maximum values in the top right corner. So when there's quite a gradient, it's actually a linear gradient. And so it, it amounts to 500 points per square unit in this area. So, but it is a, a continuous gradient like this. So we expect the density of points should be higher in the top right corner than in the bottom left corner. All right, so we can just use the same function, but instead of providing a constant number to lambda, we provide the defined function. And so the results for this first realization, it has 480 points. So remember the expected number was 520. So this is um, clearly lower. When we plot it, we can indeed see that the intensity is higher in the top right corner, much lower in the bottom left. So this is quite nice, it's quite nice, right? So each next realization will not only produce a different number of points, but also other locations. So you can see here, and indeed the, the number will vary quite a lot between subsequent realizations. So far, we have had the first or of two chapters for today. So, and then chapter 20, it is about complete spatial randomness. So actually we have defined it already before, but so the learning objective of this chapter is how to test whether a given spatial point pattern deviates from complete spatial randomness. So is the spatial point pattern, does it comply with complete spatial randomness? So it's represented by the homogeneous Poisson process. Um, which is defined as a Poisson process with spatially constant lambda intensity. So the spatially constant intensity function, which is just the parameter lambda. And so most processes, so also this also holds for their patterns, deviate from CSR or complete spatial randomness to some degree. So for a given point pattern, we can describe this deviation using a test statistic, which will compare the properties of the given spatial point pattern with complete spatial randomness. And so we can describe a deviation with a test statistic and also then compare the test statistic with its null distribution, which is defined by the complete spatial randomness in order to perform a statistical hypothesis test, which we, which we are going to do. So the test statistics relies on dividing the observation window into M subregions. So for each subregion, we compare the observed number of events and the, for a CSR, expected number of events. So this is um, denoted by these symbols in, in these slides at least. So for a subregion of equal size, of course, the expected number of events would be the total number of, of points which we have for the given uh, spatial point pattern divided by the number of subregions. This would be the expected number of events for each subregion, provided that these have an equal area. But for rectangular observation windows, it is typically what we are going to use because we can then divide the observation window in rectangular subregions of equal size. All right, so the test statistics, this test statistic is defined as the square difference of the observed and the expected number of events per subregion divided by the expected number in each subregion. So this is a calculate for each subregion in turn, and then these um, these terms are summed, and then we obtain the test statistic. And of course, if you have learned about the the square distribution, you know, this um, can will follow um, under the null hypothesis. This follows the the chi square distribution uh, with m minus one degrees of freedom. 
So, so under CSR is because we are defining the expected number of events under this CSR. So the null hypothesis um, will follow this chi square distribution. And then we can compare the test statistic with this distribution and especially with a value uh, with, which corresponds to the confidence level that we are using for this test. So the test statistics, the test statistic can be significantly less than expected uh, in one-sided left-hand testing, in which case we have a regular point pattern because it means that the differences between observed and expected are actually lower than we would um, expect from this uh, high square distribution. So it means that points are more spaced than in a random pattern because in a random pattern, you also have um, some clustering here and there. So it, it's um, you actually in a random pattern don't want to have equal spacing either. You, you have um, a bit of both. So when points are more spaced than in a random pattern, we have a regular point pattern in the opposite direction, which we can test for with one-sided right testing. So it means that the test statistics is significantly greater than expected, then we are uh, having a cluster point pattern. So points are more aggregated than in a random pattern in this case, so really clusters. If we do two-sided testing, we have that, um, just the test statistic is significantly different than expected. We are not uh, saying or testing for um, less than or greater than, and we can just only conclude that the point pattern is non-random. So in the last possibility for either one or two-sided testing, which uh, says it is not significantly different that, uh, than expected, we can just say that the point pattern has not been shown to deviate from a random point pattern in either one or both directions. So this is just general theory actually from um, statistical hypothesis testing, but with the terms, uh, especially regular and clustered, which are specific to the point patterns. In spot.stat, we have convenient functions. First of all, to calculate the number of observed um, events per subregion for a given planar point pattern object. And you can provide the number of columns and the rows which you are using to define the subregions and the number of subregions. So it will define subregions and count the number of events per subregion. So this is the quadrant count function. Then the quadrant dot test function, it takes the result of the quadrant counts function, which is a quadrant counts object. So it takes this object for CSR hypothesis testing. And this is actually enough since it has defaults for other arguments. So if you want this two-sided, you don't have to add the alternative argument, but you can add the alternative argument to to state that you need to test for a clustered or for a regular um, point pattern. So for a clustered point pattern, this means uh, right-sided testing. In the case of regular, it would mean left-sided testing. So which are both the cases, the opposite cases of one-sided hypothesis testing. You also have the method argument. It defaults to the chi-square methods, which we have discussed, but you can also provide the Monte Carlo value and to, instead of defining the CSR by using the chi square, uh, just defining this distribution by making simulations as we have been doing in previous chapter. So let's try this. And we will use the long leaf. It's another example than the one in the book. I think the book it's about the Swedish pines object. Here we are using longleaf. Longleaf is a marked point pattern object. And well, for this exercise, we don't want the marks in the plots because um, a marked point pattern, it is plotted with differently sized 
points. And so the marks, which here represent three diameter of, of, of trees, um, yeah, we want to get rid of them and we can use the unmark function to do that. So we are creating the long leaf two objects, which is a planar point pattern uh, without marks, 584 points. And it has a um, observation, a, a square observation window of 200 by 200 meters. So this is also 200 by 200 units effectively. So we can plot it. And so this is the given point pattern. So question is, would this be a random a random spatial point pattern or not. So does it have sp complete spatial randomness? Uh, you might be in doubt. There are clearly some clusters, but it is also still scattered around. There are a few gaps, so maybe you would think it, it's rather clustered, but let's try and see what this will produce. So let's calculate a number, so the, the number of observations or of events in the spatial point pattern for each subregion. And I chose to have 36 subregions. And from this, we can actually already see there is quite a large variation. So we have really, I think a maximum of 36 and a minimum of even three points per subregion. So there's quite a lot of variation between subregions. So maybe we can already presume this will not be random. And if you do not provide the NX and Y arguments, they will just default to the value of five. So you would get 25 in this case. We can also plot the quadrant count objects, which is quite nice because then you can really compare the pattern with this number. And this is also useful perhaps to choose the number of subregions because you don't you don't want to have too few because you still want to represent the whole pattern in a good way, but also not too many because to make good tests, you still want numbers that are not too low. So we can apply the quadrant dot test function on this object, which means that we are using the alternative hypothesis, the two-sided tests, and the p-value, it's very, very small, which means that we really have a, um, yeah, a, a deviation from the complete spatial randomness, which is highly significant. So, we are actually not testing in this case for whether it is clustered or regular. We are just testing, is it CSR or is it different from CSR? If we just, if we add the alternative equal clustered, then we are indeed getting a very high significant value for the alternative hypothesis clustered. So this actually confirms that we have clearly have a clustered spatial pattern in this long leaf example. If you add regular, then we have a very high p-value. It's rounded to one because it's very far from a regular spatial point pattern. So this is how you can test for complete spatial randomness in in the in spatial point patterns um, using just two functions from SPATSTAT. And I think that's all. Yeah. Are there any questions? Um thank you. And not for now, but um uh, can we try uh see um how it uh, it is by applying Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, oh, yeah. Option. I didn't try it, but we can try it. Let's, let's have a look. Let's try. I have to. Let's make this a bit larger. So. Let's see. 
So let's load spot stats, create a long leaf. And then, so this is the source code of the um, slides. But so let's, well, yeah, we can still um, compute the QC. Yes, and let's try Monte Carlo. Other tests on the QC object, and we are using methods equals Monte Carlo. Let's try. So this is for the two-side hypothesis. We equally get a very low p-value. It's a bit less low. I'm not sure whether we can somehow, um, or should I say, somehow tune how the Monte Carlo sampling works. Maybe it can be done. Well, let's first try this with with um, the one sided. Or, um, yeah, bastards. Okay, clearly this is much lower, but maybe this is also maybe an effect. Of, let, let's try the first one again. Yeah, it's okay. It's, it's it's quite consistent. So just have a look in the in the help. The Monte Carlo. Yeah. So we can we can indeed control the number of simulated samples. It's not stated. Oh yeah, it's here. Okay, there's a it's a large number which is being used by default. So we have about two thousand simulations in the case of the Monte Carlo methods. All right. So here there's more explanations. All right, so it's still with this same statistic. Okay. So it just creates about 2,000 random point patterns from the null hypothesis and calculates the, the, the he square statistic for each of them and then comparing that uh, with the distribution of these um, simulated uh, he square values. All right. I think this this answers your question. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay.